Hi, I'm Matthew Lapp, host of Matthew Lapp Train Guy Segment Show. Also today in this segment, I'm at the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa, and continuing episode 97 with part three. Okay, I've showed you the exhibits inside the James H. Andrew Museum. Ticket is required to visit the museum, but when you're inside the museum, like I said, ticket is required. So make sure you present a ticket when you go inside and look at the exhibits. And I'll show you what all has changed since part one that I've made of this episode. And here's part two of what I'm going to show you. So I'll get behind the camera and here we go. Okay, first of all, we're going to go down this little hallway. Here's a cardboard cutout of Mamie and Dwight Eisenhower. And that's their home and birthplace and museum in Boone, if you ever want to go there. Look at this quilt of the Boone and Scenic. Some of some that were already put on this quilt. Let's look at this case right here. There's a line L train. So we walk down here. And this is an Andy Bloom Blomberg. This is a schedule. And these are N scale trains and some lo steam locomotives and diesels. This one, streamliner passenger trains. The first success model, the first successful Zephyr. This is what the Pioneer Zephyr originally looked like when it was built. And here's what it looks like today as an example. And so if you look at this car right here, I'm going to show you this car. And, and this car right here actually went to the Mark Twain Zephyr when it was on display in Mount Pleasant, Iowa. And it is still with it today, but at the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad. And that's an old time train up there. Two, three actually. And how the Streamline era became more modern like and to Amtrak and some freight cars in this case right here. Here's a donation this looks like it was made from. Looks like this was all donated by some gentleman to me. And this shows you how the two railroads met in Promontory, Utah, the Jupiter and 119. So let's go around the museum. This is going behind that door is actually access to the gift shop. And this is a theater room right here that was just put up. It's kind of dark in here, so I'm going to talk quieter because someone's enjoying something in here. But you can see the pictures on the wall. I'll just look at this. I don't know if you can see clearly, but I apologize. But there's a video playing. And let's go back in the exhibit gallery. I think they just built this a long time ago. A lot of items in here were all donated by James H. Andrew. That's from the Chicago Northwestern business. And that used to be on display in the depot before this building was constructed. There's a model of the Kate Shelley Bridge which was named after her when she was a hero and saved lives of people when a bridge was washed out. And here's a hand car right here. This is a model of the water tower that's outside. And look at this case. And I'll pan along if you want to pause and look at everything. And wow, look at all these. This is a model of a, an electric locomotive that ran on the tracks outside. This is a Dodge power plant in Fraser, Iowa when it was still inactive. When it was still active, I should say. Old-fashioned cameras. Old-fashioned ticket punchers. Look at this bench. Pretty cool, huh? 
there's the Santa Fe Streamline unit. Pictures of the 8419 when it looked like that when it arrived here. And there's a speeder right here and a rail bike and some crewman's hat. And wow, pretty cool. And so let's, excuse me, let's look at this right here. And look at this case right here. Look at that old switchboard. And here's a replica train depot that was part of James H. Andrews' donation. And look at this board right here, showing how the railroads changed over the years. Here's a, there's some controls from an old diesel locomotive. Looks like these are from a Rock Island diesel engine that may have been cut up years ago. And here's some more of this. Oh, here's Midwest Central Railroad and Midwest Electric Railway in Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Something special. Wow, doesn't all this look pretty cool or what? Let's go along this wall right here. There's a model of the GG1 in that case. Look at all these old items in this case. That lantern, that hat. Here's a china plate on the rails. Models of trolleys and electric locomotives in this case right here. And that's a model of a Fort Collins trolley. And all these are Bernie trolley cars. I think that's the 21 which is at the... Which still is running on the line today. And I believe... It's hard... No, oh, 2000. I see. And... These are old seats. And also, look at this model. It's TMD locomotive. Look at these gold trains. This looks like American Flyer. This HO model in the Rock Island train called the Rock Island Rocket. And look at this. All this. And these lanterns as well. Here's the streamlined trains. That's a model of the big boy, the Hiawatha, and the M10,000. If you want to pause and read what that says, feel free to. And look at all these bells, headlights, and wow. These are mannequins wearing the uniforms. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, that number plate came off of Union Pacific 824, which was scrapped years ago. And isn't all this pretty cool or what? And if you press this button right here, it will make that trolley move down the tracks. We met a bunch of guys. I think I'll take it all the way around. Trolley Town. Pause it. Stop it right there. Look at this model of this HO scale model railroad. Santa Fe. That is an EMD switcher. There's a model of the big boy. Doesn't this look pretty cool or what? That's a rock, Illinois Central caboose at the back. And if you wondered about that projector hanging from the ceiling right there, they do slideshows in here every once in a while, and that screen is pulled down as well. What you see right behind me is Chicago and Northwestern 10856. Chicago and Northwestern. 10856 was probably built somewhere in the 1960s and is a bay window caboose.
This caboose was used on freight trains on the Chicago Northwestern Railroad and was also used as the train crew's office and is one of many Chicago Northwestern cabooses used on the Chicago Northwestern Railroad as well. Then later on, it was retired and it was acquired by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa. And most of the exterior part was painted red. It was likely used as an office for some volunteers and was likely used as a popcorn stand for a Day Out with Thomas event. Then in 2022, it was loaded onto a truck and was relocated from the spot where it stood adjacent to the water tower to a different part of the property. It was moved closer to 10th Street and is parallel to this street as well. Also, it serves as the office for rail explorers on the railroad these days as well. What you see right behind me is Chicago Great Western 4102. Chicago Great Western 4102 was built by Pullman Standard somewhere in the 1900s and is a wooden boxcar. The original number to this car is unknown. Later, it would be renumbered 4102. This car spent several years hauling cargo that a boxcar like this one hauled many years ago whenever it was used on freight trains. Then when the Chicago Great Western Railroad merged to Chicago Northwestern in 1968, it may be possible this car was likely used by that railroad. Then it was retired and later it was acquired by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa, where it is seen today. Also, it is parked on the siding near downtown Boone next to where the electric line goes and it can be found adjacent to the Armors Co-op elevator as well. What you see right behind me is Chicago Great Western 4044. Chicago Great Western 4044 was possibly built by Pullman Standard somewhere in the 1900s and is a wooden boxcar. The original number to this car is unknown. Later, it would be renumbered 4044. This car spent several years hauling cargo that a boxcar like this one hauled many years ago whenever it was used on freight trains. Then when the Chicago Great Western Railroad merged to Chicago Northwestern in 1968, it may be possible this car was likely used by that railroad. Then it was retired and later it was acquired by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa, where it is seen today. Also, it is parked on the siding near downtown Boo next to where the electric line goes, and it can be found adjacent to the Armors Co-op elevator as well. What you see right behind me is Chicago Northwestern 262-723. Chicago and Northwestern 262-723 was built somewhere in the 1900s and is a snowplow. The back part of the plow is a gondola, and the plow was made from a gondola car. Later, it was added with a snow plow. It spent many years clearing snow off the rails. This snow plow would be coupled to one or more locomotives, which would push it through the snow and clear the tracks when it was used on the railroad many years ago. Later, it was acquired by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa, where it is seen today. Also, it is parked on the siding near downtown Boone next to where the electric line goes, and it can be found adjacent to the Armors Co-op elevator as well. What you see right behind me is Chicago Northwestern 110-68. Chicago and Northwestern 110-68 was built somewhere in the 1960s and is a bay window caboose. 
This caboose was used on freight trains on the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad and was also used as the train crew's office and is one of many Chicago and Northwestern cabooses used on the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad as well. Then later on, it was retired and it was acquired by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa. It was often used on the excursion train whenever it was needed for the excursion train, especially with the Thomas the Tank Engine events, but on the train that would go through the valley. Then it was decided it would be put on display adjacent to the James H. Andrew Museum building. In 2018, it was being repainted and re-stenciled till it was all complete. Today, it can be found here on display at the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa, where it is preserved today. What you see right behind me is Fort Dodge, Des Moines and Southern 2254. Fort Dodge Des Moines and Southern 2254 was built by General Electric in Schenectady, New York in 1943 and is the 17903rd diesel locomotive built by that factory and is a 60-ton center cab type diesel locomotive. It was originally built for the United States Air Force and was originally numbered 7858. It spent many years transporting army equipment on freight cars whenever it was used by the Air Force. Later, it was retired and in 1983, it was purchased by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa. It was then renumbered 2254 and lettered Fort Dodge Des Moines and Southern and had a shade of yellow similar to that used by the Fort Dodge Des Moines and Southern Railroad. In 2012, it was repainted in an attractive orangish yellow and white paint scheme. Today, it is preserved here at the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad, and it is sometimes seen rolling on the tracks and is used to pull the freight cars down the tracks, and it is even used to rotate equipment around as well. What you see right behind me is Metro 1628. Metro 1628 was built by the St. Louis Car Company in St. Louis, Missouri in 1971 and is a Highliner coach. This car was originally used by the Illinois Central Railroad on commuter trains going to and from Chicago Millennium Station and hauled passengers for many years and this is its original number. Then when the Illinois Central and Gulf Mobile and Ohio Railroads merged to become the Illinois Central Gulf in 1972, it was used by that railroad till Metro took over in 1987 and used the car for many years. And the car saw service on the system for many years. Then it was retired and was likely stored away. In 2007, it was acquired by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa, where it is seen today. What you see right behind me is Metro 1511. Metro 1511 was built by the St. Louis Car Company in St. Louis, Missouri in 1971 and is a Highliner coach. This car was originally used by the Illinois Central Railroad on commuter trains going to and from Chicago Millennium Station and has hauled passengers for many years and this is its original number. Then when the Illinois Central and Gulf Mobile and Ohio Railroads merged to become the Illinois Central Gulf in 1972, 
It was used by that railroad till Metra took over in 1987, and it saw service over the system for many years. Then it was retired and was likely stored away. In 2007, it was acquired by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa, where it is preserved today. What you see right behind me is Metra 1523. Metra 1523 was built by the St. Louis Car Company in St. Louis, Missouri in 1971 and is a Highliner coach. This car was originally used by the Illinois Central Railroad on commuter trains going to and from Chicago Millennium Station and hauled passengers for many years, and this is its original number. Then, when the Illinois Central and Gulf Mobile and Ohio Railroads merged to become the Illinois Central Gulf in 1972, it was used by that railroad till Metra took over in 1987, and it operated over the system for many years. Then, it was retired and was likely stored away. In 2007, it was acquired by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa, where it is today. What you see right behind me is the Chicago South Shore and South Bend flat car. The Chicago South Shore and South Bend flat car was built somewhere in the 1900s and is a depressed center flat car. This car's original number is unknown. It spent many years in freight service on the Chicago South Shore and South Bend hauling cargo that a flat car like this one hauled many years ago. Later, it was retired and was acquired by the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa. Also, it is used as a portable substation car and also... Only about a quarter of the car is sticking outside of the wall of the shed as well. What you see right behind me is Iowa State Power Plant 1858. Iowa State Power Plant 1858 was built by General Electric in Schenectady, New York in 1944 and is the 18042nd diesel locomotive built by that factory and is a 45 ton center cab type diesel locomotive. It was originally built for the United States Army and was originally numbered 8534. The locomotive was used to haul army equipment on freight cars as well. Then, it was later sold to the Iowa State University Power Plant and was renumbered 1858 and was repainted in the Iowa State colors of cardinal and gold. It was used to switch coal cars around along the remnants of the old Ames and College Railway. Then, it was purchased by the Fort Dodge Des Moines and Southern Railroad. Also, the number on the locomotive means the year Iowa State College of Agriculture and Mechanic Arts, the predecessor of Iowa State University, began. It was then moved to the Boone and Scenic Valley Railroad in Boone, Iowa, where it is today, and is mainly used for moving equipment around as well. Also, it is primarily used to move Charles City Western Trolley Car 50 to position whenever trolley operations are happening. And also, it is also used to put the trolley away as well when it's the end of the day of trolley operations. Well, I hope you all enjoyed learning about trains with me today in Matthew Lapp Train Guy Segment Show. Also, I hope to see you all again in the next segment. And if you didn't subscribe to my channel yet, 
The subscribe button is just down below the video screen. And if you didn't give my Facebook page a like yet, here's where you'll want to go. And if you didn't give the Instagram page a follow yet, here's where you'll want to go as well. Also, be sure to get your merch at teesprings.com. Link is in the description box below, along with the Facebook pages and Instagram pages. And remember to subscribe to the Train Guy. So this is Matthew Lapp, host of Matthew Lapp Train Guy Segment Show. Sign now until next time. All aboard!